Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are ready. Ready. Tonight is very exciting and challenging. And tonight, a lot of people are going to know how to get closer in the presence of the Lord. Where are we talking about tonight? We are talking about our worship and conversation are in heaven. Now, let that sink in. <laughs> let that sink in. Why? Because God is spirit. And where does he live in us? In our spirit. And that's why we have to let it sink in. <laughs> yeah, the joy is here already. Praise the Lord. <laughs> the joy is moving. Why? Because in the presence of the Lord is <laughs> joy for the joy. That's it. That's it. And so tonight, many of you are going to have a shift to learn to live more in the spirit. And let the Holy Spirit flow through your soul and your body that all three get strengthened. And so we are talking about that our conversation and worship is in heaven. And I'm going to read the scripture to you right now. Philippians 3, verse 20. I'm telling you, a good preacher is Bible-based and uses the Word of God. And therefore, I'm going to read this to you. <laughs> For our conversation is in heaven. From Also, we look for our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. I've, read, I've told you now where the teaching is about. It's in the Bible. So the Bible, if the Bible says it, that settles it. It says our conversation is in heaven. Now some modern day translations will say, for our citizenship is in heaven. Great. If your citizenship is in heaven, what language do you speak then? A heavenly language. Yeah? Amen. So where's your passport from? From Amen. heaven. And we know in Ephesians that it does say we are citizens of heaven. And therefore our conversation is in heaven. Where is Jesus seated right now? At the right hand side of the Father. Where? In the throne in heaven. Therefore our worship is also in heaven. Our worship is before the throne of God. And today I'm telling you, we're in a shift. God is taking the body of Christ further. That we are more going to be heaven's conscience. Because God wants now our worship to come first out of the heavenly realm. Our prayer and intimacy should be in the heavenly sphere. Where Abba touches us, loves on us, cares for us. Where we experience that, so that our conversation is with Him, with the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, who are where? In heaven. And it says the kingdom of God is within us. So within our spirit, we are connected with the kingdom of God in heaven. Amen. Amen. So this is how... We are to learn to live, is to learn to live before the throne of heaven. So in the 80s, there was a lot of teaching about warfare, and it was good. But in the 90s, God started to move with His Spirit, and God started to show us and teach us now. We have to learn to move in the heavenly sphere, and out of that, we learn to do warfare. So we need to learn to do throne room worship. Throne room intimacy. Throne, and out of that we pray. And the angel armies are sent out. And God put in my spirit to do a whole book about that. And this, this has to come out of that intimate relationship. That this worship and prayer, what God wants to bring us to, has to come out of intimacy. Why? Because the spirit and the bride say... 
Come, Lord Jesus Christ. So our, our mind and everything is to be where? In heaven. And out of that we will see the kingdom of God come down on earth. And out of that we see people coming to Christ. But you cannot win a soul by yourself. It is the Holy Spirit that convicts people. And so we need to see the Holy Spirit come down. And that is why we have to learn to walk in the heavenly realm. That's why we have to learn to worship in the spirit in the heavenly realm. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I don't want to preach long. I want to get through this so that you get it in your spirits. And then you can go for longer sermons and, and study this. Because this is very important. And this tonight... Our worship and conversation are in heaven is going to do what? It's going to shake our rational mindsets. This is breaking the Greek friends rational mindset. Jesus Christ was and is a Jew. He was of the tribe of Judah. He was from the Hebrews, from the Israeli family. And in Israel, their mindset was heavenly. Their mindset was walking with God. Their mindset was body, soul, and spirit. And it was totally different than the Greek mindset. Greek mindset was only spirit. And it's a different mindset. So the French people took on the Greek mindset. The Greek mindset is rationalism. And this has crept into the Western church and they have brought it around the world. And so people want to worship God in a rational way. Now we're going to see in a minute that Jesus rebukes that. Jesus Christ comes against that mindset of Greece and of France. See, because in France... They took this card and they put a woman on it, I think about 15 or 1700, and they said, this is our God, this woman is our God. They killed the Christians in France by the thousands. And we have from that, this night that is known. And all these people were slaughtered. And today we have the Olympics. And what they brought in in that time, they brought in the gelatine. One of the signs, one of the, the pictures they used in picture language last week by the opening of Paris was a gelatine. It was a man who had no more head. And so this was said, but then there was another thing in France last week by the Olympics. And it was the pale horse with the man of death sitting on it. And what I believe, what has happened last week is they released, they sent a spirit out from France. And I believe it's, it went into England. And the riots broke out. Because they were releasing things. Because there's a big history between France and England. Of bloodshed, murder. And now we see this explode. Where? In England. Why? Because that was the custodian place of Christianity. And so they're attacking it. It's under attack. And so now God says, you as the believers, you have to rise up. And our sister said it also, as a Gideon, a Gideon army. Amen. But we cannot do it in the flesh. We cannot do it in the soul. We have to do it in the spirit. Amen. And so today, it's time for the body of Christ around the world, but especially in the West, to get on fire. Amen. To burn with fresh fire. Amen. And it starts in the worship. The worship has to be a place where the presence of God comes down in a mighty way. But then it also says, stir up the gift that is within you. And that's what we have to learn. Yes. To Amen. stir up what is inside of us. But see, the spirits of intimidation now are moving and attacking Christians. Some of our friend, friends, their children from the Netherlands, 
They were in Germany and the hotel collapsed two days ago. And, and they were under the, the mess in that building and the, the fire people have took them out of it. And they're now safe, but there was a whole family. There were many people that were in that building when it collapsed. Yeah, and so, so the enemy is coming to shoot at us. The body of Christ to do what? To make us the fearful. But the Bible says God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power and of sound mind. But how does that work? It works through the Holy Spirit. And that is why we have to stir up the gift that's within us. We have to stir up the river of God that is within us. Jesus Christ said that if you believe, Amen. He said it in John 7 verse 38, he said, rivers of living water will flow out of your innermost being, out of your spirit, man. And we have to stir it up. And therefore now we go to what the Lord Jesus Christ said. We're going to read this. And he says this, that God is spirit. And those who come and worship him must worship his spirit and in truth. And I'm going to read it to you from the scripture. We are here to help you to be built up and to be trained to be worshipers that have a passion for Christ and to move in the fire and power of the Holy Spirit to see end time revival in the, in the house of God, on the streets, and wherever we are. So this is what Jesus Christ said. But the hour cometh, John 4, verse 23 and 4. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such a worship. Verse. God is spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and and in truth. Now Jesus Christ said this. He said, must. Yeah? Must. I once this thought come in America they have this beautiful car, a Mustang. A Mustang is a horse and it's a very powerful car. And so Jesus said it in a powerful way. He said, if you want to be powerful in God, you must, like this powerful horse, worship his spirit and in truth. So, he said, Nicholas, a horse. Yes, when the bride of Christ comes back with Christ, they're riding on horses. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, what Jesus is and how he's coming also riding on a white horse is more powerful than anything that the enemy wants to release. Amen. And the enemy cannot release anything before God's time because it's God who releases the horses of Revelation 4. Mm. And so, so Jesus said it as a rebuke to what? To the French Greek rational mindset. You must worship his spirit. He came against the mindset that we only are worshiping with our understanding. See, this is why the churches in Europe have gone empty. Because there's no move of the Spirit. But then people who in Europe open the doors for the move of the Spirit, those churches have been growing. Especially African churches. Because they understand that we have to worship in the Spirit. It is not maybe, it is a must. Now, I'm going to show you further what it says in 1 Corinthians about worshipping in the Spirit. This is 1 Corinthians 14.
For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayeth. You hear that? So when I pray in an unknown tongue, who is praying? My spirit. So how does our spirit pray? Through an unknown tongue. Now, many people right now will think, Nicholas, what are you talking about? I'm talking about the Bible. And I'm coming against your rational mindset. Because your rational mindset will fight this. Especially if you're from the Western world. Yeah? It will fight you. But even people from other nations, this will fight you. And, and people try to understand 1 Corinthians 14 with a rational mind. You can't understand this about the gifts of the Spirit with a rational mind. No! This is why Jesus said you must worship in the Spirit. Yes. Amen. So I'm going to read this again. For I pray in an unknown tongue. This is praying in tongues or heavenly language. My Spirit prayed. But my understanding is what? Unfruitful. So, verse 15. What is it then? When I pray with the Spirit, I will pray with my understanding also. I will sing with the Spirit, and I will sing with the understanding also. So here we have it. What is the key to worshiping the Spirit? It is what Jesus said, Mark 15. And the believers that shall heal the sick, cast out devils, and that shall speak with new tongues. This is what Jesus Christ said. You shall speak with new tongues. Mm -hmm. The believer. Are you a believer? Yes. Yeah. Are you speaking in tongues? Yes. Hallelujah. But more, many Christians are not speaking in tongues. And in others, they speak a little bit in tongues. But they're not stirring up the gift. They're not using the gift in a powerful way. Why? Because most of the shepherds don't know how to pray strong in tongues. And that is why people like me are being raised up to do what? Say, come on, body, and body of Christ, rise up. Stir up the gift that's within you. Yeah, you will have a battle with your mind. But then you have to overcome it. Amen. Because when I, when I pray in a tongue, Apostle Paul says, My spirit is praying. Amen. Oh yeah, I am praying in the spirit. Are you praying in tongues? No. Well, you're not really praying in the spirit. You're praying with your understanding according to the Bible. See, now you will fight me. But you're not fighting me. You're fighting Jesus. Because Jesus said, the believer... He didn't say some of the believers. He said the believers. This is why Apostle Paul says in 1 Corinthians 14, I wish you were all speaking with other tongues. And if the gift was only for a few believers, then on the day of Pentecost, of the 11 apostles, only three would have spoken in tongues. But it said they all were speaking in tongues. And there was 120 People and it said they were all speaking in tongues. It was only for a few, but it wasn't. It's for everybody. Amen. It's just the blockages can stop us from having it and we have to deal with it. But it's for everybody. And see, this is a message that needs to be brought right now because the pressure is going to be so strong on the Christians because financial crisis is coming, great sicknesses, pestilence is coming. Amen. That's what the, the, the pale horse. Is the sword, we're seeing the sword going to England right now. <clears throat> Children were killed, stabbed. Horrible things are happening. Ooh. Pestilence. Famine. Do you know there are plenty of worldwide famine? I can tell you a lot about all this stuff. But see, I want to educate you first what? Spiritually. Why? So you're a spiritual warrior. So that the house of God will be filled with what? With the presence of God. Because you're pressing in the, to the presence of God. But you can't do it just with normal praying. You have to cry out to God. You have to be desperate. Amen. And that is if you are in church and you don't have any move of the spirit. You have to cry out until. That's what they did on the day of Pentecost. They cried out. So they prayed in the understanding. And then they were, the house was filled with the Holy Ghost. 
and they all spoke with new tongues. And this is where it is about. You must, you must speak with other tongues. You must worship in spirit and in truth. We don't leave the truth behind. The truth is important because we don't want flaky Christians. The truth delivers. The truth sets free. The truth teaches us. The truth will help us to be true disciples. So, so we cannot only worship in spirit. It's spirit and in truth. Amen? And so I'm a truth preacher. But today we want to stay on the spirit and truth. And we want to help you to rise up in the spirit. Amen? Amen. Now, the thing is this. Good meaning pastors will use the scripture to stop the move of the spirit. And they don't know. And this is why now we're going to go to the next level. Mm -hmm. I was in a church and the pastor said things. And the same thing had been said by an elder in the Netherlands. And I walked out of it and it was about worship. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me. That was incorrect what the pastor said. And partly I knew it. And then I went to study deeper in the scriptures, where, where, where God showed me, your conversation is where? In heaven. Whereas this, your worship has to be in heaven. And so, it is through what? Through the Spirit. The Spirit pray. The Spirit worships. But then what religious pastors do, they confuse the different kinds of worship. And they take so they, let's say they talk about the worship of the Spirit, but then they use this, the, 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 the worship of Romans 12, and they put it over it, and therefore they quench the work of the Holy Spirit. Nicholas, what are you talking about? Well, we're going to see that there's, there's different Greek words for worship, and that's where it is at. And so we are showing you there is... In the word of worship, there are two main words in the Hebrew language. Let me say first what I want to say is this. Jesus said you must worship in spirit. But then it talks about in Romans 12. It says this. It says you must, <clears throat> um, with your body, worship the Lord. Yeah, it says that there. That um, to present your body... As a living sacrifice which is your service or worship now the Lord pointed out Nicholas what does it say there body so this is body worship which is service which is not the same as spirit worship okay so now we go so that you start to see it Jesus said in John 4, he said, you shall worship with spirit. Romans 12 is with service to the community with your body, which is an act of worship. But that's not with your spirit, it's with your body. And see, this is where it is. Rational people like to put this over the spirit worship. But you can't, because there are two different Greek words. And so... Now we're going to look to the words. First, we're talking about the Old Testament Hebrew word for worship. That is a shacha. And the shacha means laying prostrated in worship before the Lord. This is what King David did. Why did they do that? Because it was already a sign of how they worship in heaven. And when you read the book of Revelation, you will see the elders lay prostrate before the throne of God in heaven. So in the Greek, there are two words, two main words for worship. Number one, proskoneo. Proskoneo is kneeling, bowing, and also kissing. So it also has to do with love. The language of love is involved in a New Testament worship. And we do it in reverence and in bowing. But it's also at times 
laying prostrate before the Lord, which we see in Revelation 4. And so this is very important to, to get hold of this. I mean, when I was going to the scriptures of Revelation, I was like, wow, this is spirit worship because they are spirits in heaven. And we can learn from that. And so King David was already shown that we have to lay like that before the Lord because he was already seeing the heavenly worship. And in heaven, that is how they worship. And, and so we have to learn to worship in spirit. And so the word, first word, proskudonuyo, is connected with John 4, verse 23 and 4, and Revelation 4 and 10. <laughs> And so this is where your spirit worships. So now we're going to go to the second word, la treo. And we're going to look up now, Romans 12, verse 1. Amen. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, Holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And see some other ones, some other translation, it says, which is your reasonable worship. So we see the connection, that that's the connection. So I do see that. But where does this talk about? It says here, by the mercies of God that you present your bodies. You hear that? Your what? Bodies. Your bodies as a living sacrifice. This is why I say that the Greek and the Hebrew customs are different. The Greeks are connected <laughs> totally towards the spirit. But the Hebrew is body, soul, and spirit so we worship God with our spirit we worship him with our soul and we worship him with our body so this is our service like Amy she goes to school she teaches the children and as she is doing that she's walking in a relationship with the Lord but her body she is giving a service to the children as a worship to the Lord she teaches Bible in her school she teaches biology and science in her school and that is an act of service for the Lord she is glorifying the Lord and so that is where the book of Romans is talking about it's not here talking about singing the worship through singing but it's important that we have a light in this world your occupation what you do with your life that is your service of worship that is in the body, that is in the natural realm. You see the difference? And so we cannot put this above what Jesus said. We are quenching the spirit. And we, and we are grieving it by our sin of unbelief in the move of God. We have to put the move of God before, above an irrational thinking. We have to crucify the sin of our rational thinking. Amen. So we are being obedient to the word of God. So in this word, we have two different connections. We have service and worship, and then we have to, to pay homage and serve. And this is where we have Philippians 3 verse 1 and 3 verse 20. So in Philippians 3 verse 1 it says this this is the true circumcision those who worship in spirit and so this is so important because we are not only dealing with the rational mindset we're also dealing with the hardest demon which one is the religious spirit and the religious spirit wants to work out our salvation by the flesh it wants to even save people through good works. But we are not saved through good works. It says we are saved and redeemed by grace. And not through your work that no man shall boast. 
And so this is very important to understand. Yeah? So because, because it says, for the true circumcision is those who worship in spirit. And Paul tells how he was a Pharisee of Pharisees and how he was a man trying to do everything in the flesh. And then he says, no, the true circumcision is when you worship in spirit. And that is why he says later, for our conversation is in heaven. You see, it's all connected. So when you see it, and there's so much depth there, and you can study Philippians 3, there's so much more I could say, and it would put you on fire. Praise God. And I love this, what we're talking about. Is it easy? No. Because you have to crucify the flesh. Amen. Because the flesh does not want you to speak in tongues. Your soul does not want you to sing in tongues. This is why it has left most of the Western churches. They've gone to flesh lights, to flesh each services. And they have driven in many places the Holy Spirit out of the place. But now God says... Now the day is that I'm going to shake everything so that you can get your house in order. And so we can listen and obey to what Jesus said, or we can lose our faith and, and be part of the great falling away. Are you want, do you want to be part of the great falling away? Or do you want to be a part of the great bride that is getting ready to see many one in this last hour for Jesus Christ? Part of the bride. Amen. We want to be part of the bride. We want to be on fire. Therefore, we must worship in spirit. Amen. Therefore, we must learn to pray in tongues. I know many times on prayer walks in the park and I pray loud in tongues. I sing in tongues. I go up on the hill. I pray and sing in tongues. Here in home, I go and pray and sing in tongues. Our sister is learning tonight new things because we are helping her to be trained as a trainee to move in the spirit so she can help others to be set free. Amen. Others to get on fire. People to move, they can move forward in the glory of God. Amen. 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 I'm, I'm going to say this again. You must worship in spirit. Well, thank you very much. Lord, I pray for everybody right now. Let your fire and your glory fall on them. Lord, that they, they say, help us, Lord, to overcome the flesh. Help us, Lord, to be changed from glory to glory. And Father, we lose your glory and your fire over them. In the name of Jesus Christ, that they will learn to worship in spirit. That they will learn to pray in spirit by praying and singing in tongues. And then also with the understanding, Lord, and that they will prophesy and visions and dreams and know where to go, where to lead people to Christ, where to build up the army of the Lord and where help the people who are struggling. Father, we are praying for that revival fire, the glory of you in the last days, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.